Praise the Lord, dear friend. Tom Schmanton the fourth. Coming to you live with a prophetic message. And I'm going to entitle this Radical Leadership Volume One. I have been hearing the Lord speak to me uh, the last few days and give me some revelation on how uh, wicked rulership and leadership has really messed people and things up in whole societies even. So it needs to be addressed. Uh, it's really amazing when your eyes come open to revelation that certain things that were happening in places didn't have to happen. Some things the devil really went out of his way to cause issues and problems for whole societies and there was no one there to stop them. There's a, there's a principle that says things don't stay messed up because of evil doers, although you think it's all them. Really the problem more so is that good men do nothing. It's been said by several uh, giants in mind like Albert Einstein was one who said that I think and there were some other key leaders that said things like that too and it's true you know uh, it has to stop and as God's prophet I want to talk about radical leadership I want to talk about what it it's going to take to see whole entire societies be liberated. You know, the scripture also says, to lay a little groundwork here, it says when the righteous are in power, the people rejoice and they're safe and they're happy and they have peace. But when the wicked rule, there's torment and moaning, mourning, moaning, Sadness, And, you know, more than that, circumstances of things that just don't get done correctly. I am reminded, had a rude reminder of uh, stirring up some things that I hadn't thought about in a while. And uh, of people that are just so evil that people actually were deceived to think that they're okay when they're not okay. They're absolute sons of the devil. They're, they're wicked even in the church, imagine this. Let me not, I don't want to go into all the details on it, but uh, people have been oppressed and suppressed and ripped off and deceived and lied to and cheated on and cheated with. And because of some fool or few fools that get into position, but they're really not God's men. They're corrupt fools. Mm -hmm. That's the truth. And they go around parading themselves like they're good. They, people also do this in the political arena. You know, going around like they're good. And really they're agents of the devil. You look at America now. One particular party who, you know, all of them are running. You wonder who's running from them. They're running. Where are they running to? They're trying to run into a place of leadership. They have no business being there. Imagine. You know. So, let's get our eyes opened. The prophetic anointing is an eye opener. The prophetic anointing, the prophetic grace and mantle opens people's eyes to see what God can show them about every situation. You know, wisdom is discerning difference, knowing difference discernment and discerning of spirits is knowing what's evil and what's good you know also men and people if they got devils or evil agendas or their behavior or character or they're criminals in disguise or they're demonic agents in disguise or if they're good you know discernment does that Imagine people parade themselves like they're okay, like they're somebody, and really behind the scenes, you know, they're just a total devil. It's really going on, my friends, and it needs to be broken. I want to call this radical leadership. 
because the only way this is going to change is when Kabro Shakata, I could say it in tongues, I want to speak in tongues here. When people rise up to begin to infiltrate systems in the church, in the government arena, in the business arena, in the entertainment arena, you know, all these spheres of business in life, the family, the church, the, oh my God, the family, the church, the, uh, the Lord is, is, is talking here about, about this. He wants people to rise up and begin to infiltrate all of the arenas of societies. I wrote a book called Healing the Soul of the Society. It started out as a long prophecy and it became 250 prophecies. And funny enough, it ended up on 250 pages where well, the book was 250 pages. I had no idea it would be that. And I had no idea it would be 250 prophecies when the, and the book was finished. It was exactly 250 pages. Didn't know that. God knew that. And uh, it started out as a prophecy for a particular place. But when I looked at that, I said, hey, if I can take the place, the ge geography out of this and just leave the principles and the prophecies in their pure form of in content of what they're saying, then this is a this is a manual, a prophetic manual book for any society to uh, get free from all kinds of bondages and situations. And the Lord is, uh, is going to have me do that. To, uh, to, to make it a, a principle-based book and reprint that as a, a prophetic manual and guide for everything that needs to be broken in a society and instituted in a society to heal what the Lord affectionately called the soul of the society. Which, you know, the soul is the mind, the will, the emotions, all of this, and then there's the spirit, and the two are together. But we call the soul the thing that's eternal, that's like a God-breathed thing. It's not just flesh that can live and carry someone, it's really what's within. So this is the deep thing. What's in the heart of man is either good or evil. And we know the Bible says where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. But also the Bible says that the candle, uh, the Spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. You know, in the Spirit of a man who's, who's born again and been made righteous, uh, by the Spirit of God, that's the place now where, uh, you know, the right thing begins to dwell. And when the, here's, here's, the, here's the point about this leadership thing here. When that becomes a thing in leadership and in the whole entire society, wow, then things begin to press forward that it becomes like a corporate thing where righteousness is everywhere. And it's not everywhere, but it's infiltrating everywhere because there's enough people that are on fire. My God, I feel this. That are on fire. Horrible shikito. To get the presence of God and the word of God and the reality of God into the society to inject it really literally into the heart, mind, soul, and body of the society this is crucial this is important this is vital if you want to have radical change and uh, you know the scripture says that the wicked flee when no man pursues them because they're guilty I, I, I'll give you a little little curt, curt like natural example there's someone I saw, I was walking in a certain mall, and I saw this person, and I looked at them, and I thought, oh, this person looks familiar. They said hi with a smile, but they kept walking, and I just stopped and turned around and looked back at this person, and I was like, just standing there staring at them, and they were just walking, 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 and I discerned that in their mind, like the last time I saw them, they were fired from their job because I was in the office, because, and then the... Uh, Another friend of mine was working in that office, and I said, what happened to that person? They seemed nice. What happened? Oh, well, they got caught doing something illegal or something and blah, blah. And he didn't want to tell the details. They said that they had a meeting, and they couldn't discuss it for the sake of the company and all that. And they weren't, he wasn't 
at a protocol. He wasn't going to tell the details of exactly what they did, but it was something, you know, unethical and even worse. And they were let go. And then when I saw them, they saw me. They probably registered that in their mind and walked without stopping to say, hi, how are you? Maybe in the fear that I might ask what happened to them, which I wouldn't. I'd just say, hi, I remember you from so-and-so. If it's too painful for you to remember that, I'm sorry. You know, I wouldn't say that because, you see, no one's supposed to know. Shh, 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 you know. Zip, zip, keep it quiet, right? <laughs> We're not supposed to know what happened. So I was like, you could have just stopped and said hi and talk for a minute. But really, it showed the guilt. So people are carrying, har- this is the point, harboring this kind of guilt of situations all layered up together. And it begins to go to the hilt and sink to high heaven, you know, because people are carrying all this all this iniquity instead of just getting it cleared out and living right to, you know I don't know people do things but if someone made a mistake like they could just repent and get clear of it and forget it right and still get refreshed and revived and become a good person one thing I've been doing for many weeks now as I mentioned is I've been in prayer and I just finished eight days of them the most brilliant conference where the presence of God was saturating us. I mean, it was phenomenal. And last night, the last five minutes of the event was God God showed up. I'll just say that. He showed up every day, but that last five minutes, I think there was something special that happened that was just an eternal blessing. I can't even describe it. And I am just, I know I'm going to be, you know, in the ethers, ethereals for a few days after that touch. And, um, you know, <laughs> I'm not even going to describe it, but it's just it's something that's happening. So here's my point. By doing that, I'm, and this is what I'm trying to say to you. That's why I'm making it as an example, because I am seeking God and I'm investing the time and the energy and the passion and the pursuit of the touch of God to fill me to overflowing. So I'm ready for the next season, more so than before, although we're flowing in things all the time. We have to keep the fire burning. Let me tell you something. It's not enough for you to get touched once. You got to be getting touched all the time. And it's your responsibility to keep the flame burning and to keep pursuing God and to keep in his presence. The times are refreshing come by the presence of the Lord. Acts 3.19 says men should repent. And then he said, and then the times are refreshing. That's, that's powerful. People should repent. Just repent. First John 1 and uh, Acts 3.19. Repent and then the presence of God will come and refresh you, wow, in Jesus' name. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him, Jeremiah 33, 3, and he'll show you great and mighty things that you don't know yet. Seek him, cry out to him, call unto him. The psalm, psalmist said in 24, 34, I can't remember, I don't have, I can't look it up right now. The, uh, this, this, poor, this man cried and the Lord heard him and delivered him out of his trouble. Blind Bartimaeus had the need of healing, and he cried, cried loud, loud. People told him to shut up, and he was seeking God passionately. Do you know what that does? It brings the miraculous. It brings the touch. It brings the fire. It brings the glory. Come on. And now you, you, you're walking in it. There's more anointing in, in this vehicle right now, me talking to you, coming through this screen, that I'm alluding to and talking and describing. It's happening right now. Receive the touch of heaven. He's here. He is here. The Holy Spirit is here right here, right now. Woo! I don't have to go, oh, come on, shake it out. Oh, you know, start doing all these gyrations to, for you to know. I hope I don't have to, to know that God is here. We need the touch of heaven. We need to pursue God. And we need to be radical leaders. You know, a lot of people don't fulfill the pure will of God because they're too afraid. You can't be afraid. You have to be able to risk it all. You have to be able to put your life. I tell you, I, I'm in the place where, and I've been like this forever, I, as far as I can remember, since I gave my life to the, to the Lord, and, and the Lord appeared to me and, and laid his hands on my head in an open vision in 1986 and said, Son, I've ordained you as my prophet to the nations. I didn't even know what a prophet was. To the nations, what is that? I mean, I know the nations. I mean, I'm, I'm a brilliant intellectual. I'm a college graduate. I'm a learned person. I'm a businessman. I'm in executive positions and jobs and government and all that. But I, I, 
prophet. What's that? You know, we didn't grow up in a Christian environment. So the Lord appeared to me. And then once I left all of my work, all of my jobs, all of my... Uh, to go into the ministry full time, the Lord had me make a vow to him that I'll never work for a man or an organization all the days of my life on earth. Whatever he gives me, I'll have. And guess what? God pays better than any company or any person will. People are stingy about money and you have to work so hard, negotiate so much and do so much to get paid a lot in business or in what. But you work diligently for God, he'll bless your life. And I'm a witness of that. So like the point is I'm dependent on Jehovah so much. I mean, I mean like, 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 like to the point of he comes through, it's great. He doesn't, we're, we don't, what are we going to do? You know, there's no backup plan. There's no plan B. There's no, uh, other essence of something that's going on that's like devoid of our de devoid of our dependence upon him are you hearing me so this uh, this life of walking with God is a very heavy thing but to be a radical leader you got to be like that you have to pursue God and get filled with him to the point where now your life it's not your own. You're not just bought with the price as a believer to experience redemption, but now you're his own servant. And thus you become a radical leader. To do what? To bring change. To bring fire to the generation you're living in. To bring the Holy Ghost power to the ends of the earth. Yes. And too few people are doing it. Oh my. Can you imagine how much church there is and it's just starchy and, and flat and, 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 and just methodical and predictable and stylized and formatted and materialized in the realm of like the program and like man is doing it this way. This is what we're going to do now. This is what we're going to do next. And even the scripted, you know, from 7.05 to 7.10 is, or 7.15 to 7.20 is prayer because 7 o'clock to 7.15 was songs, three hymns, three hers, and a homily and a hymn. Three hymns, three hers, did you get it? Three hymns, three hers, and a homily. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, that's, I mean, what is that? And just singing songs, you know. It's good to sing. It's better than not singing. <clears throat> no problem with that. I mean, better off being in church, maybe. And, and, it, and maybe you're saved. You, you may be in a, a spiritually void environment as far as the anointing and the presence of the Holy Ghost is involved. But at least you're not drinking in a bar. Or, you know, may, hopefully you'll get to heaven. <clears throat> you get to heaven, it might be a little wild for you because you didn't experience that in your church. But at least you'll be there. It's better to be there than, any, than, than the other place or somewhere else. Okay, so. But that's not enough. I don't want to, woo, placate that and say that's okay, you know. Oh, Lord. That's okay, you know. It's just okay to do it any old way. You don't need the glory and the fire and the power. Oh, it's just like, you know. No problem, however it's going to go, it can go. And whatever little you have is okay, and God knows and understands. No, he doesn't. He said to seek him. I was singing this song a, a while ago. It's, it's called uh, Exalt the Lord Our God. I want to change the words a little bit, because people may not know what a footstool is. I, why, why did they have to write that it's at a footstool anyway? Footstool, it sounds like you're... You know, footstools in Africa would be really demeaning. It would be like, you know, that this little chair that it's almost like a stool that's made with someone's hand with three legs and three pegs and a little thing to sit on. And, and you'd think of that maybe. So I, I want to change it to let's worship at his heavenly throne. I mean, I'll get the words right. So I was, I was changing a couple of the words as I was singing it. But 
It's this great old song that says, Exalt the Lord our God and worship at His... I, I change it to Heavenly Throne. Okay? And... and uh, Holy is he, holy is he, holy is he. You know those angels that cry, holy, 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 day and night, and they don't stop. And the four and twenty elders are in the glory so much they fall down and cast their thrones upon the, their, their, their crowns upon the ground and they can't, you know. <laughs> oh my God, think about it. They can't, uh, they can't do anything else. I'm seeing the most beautiful sunset here. Oh my Jesus! I'll put a I'll put a picture of this on the on the social media here. You'll see what I'm seeing right now. F phenomenal. So we, we we there's there's a way that you can get into God's presence and um, forcefully pursue Him. And you find him and he finds you, then it's going to be like, boom, an impartation is going to come. And now you're going to be radically on fire in the spirit, in the spirit, in the spirit for the Lord. And everywhere you go, things will change for the better because the touch of God is upon you. All right, I'm going to continue in this, but I heard this word, radical leadership. Be bold as a lion not afraid of anything, and don't revere men's opinions or words more than you do God's, and don't think about the consequences of obeying God. Think about disappointing God, how tragic that will be. You'd rather not do that. So we want to please Him. We want to go full flow, and I prophesy right now, and I feel so strongly in, in, in the mind of God that the next season is going to be such a glory, such an awakening, such a, an awesome outpouring of the Spirit. It's going to be beyond what we can imagine. Miracles will happen instantaneously. People will be healed and delivered. The power of God will touch people. The Word of the Lord will flow. Messages will come from heaven. Things will begin to uh, 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 flush out devils. Devils will begin to ex be exposed. Wicked rulership and wicked leadership in places, even in churches, even in government, even in societies, will begin to be eradicated and removed. And I'm going to do this, says the Lord. You're going to see my hand. You're going to see it. You're going to see me moving so greatly through my own chosen elect. Those that are full of my fire, says the Lord. Those, are filled with my, those who are filled with my glory, says the Lord. Those who are filled with the touch of my my hand upon them, the fire of the Spirit in them, and they're going to begin to begin to lead millions of people to me, and whole societies and nations to me, and things will begin to change in such radical dimensions that whole formats of new things that I've ordained, says the Lord, will begin to flow, and things that I've not ordained will begin to diminish and fall off, and those that have been wicked and oppressed and suppressed people uh, multitudes of people, churches, societies, groups of people. The Lord says, I'm going to begin to cast them down and the things of old will be no more. And God says, I'll do a new thing. And it's going to rise and spring forth. And the presence of my spirit is going to be moving in the midst of my houses. And people are going to begin to see, people are going to begin to see what, what, I've, what I've ordained. People are going to begin to flow. People are going to begin to see uh, the, the new things that I've, that I've ordained and I've desired to be in manifestation. So get ready for this, says the Lord, because the time is over now where you could just have regular, you know, things that are so quiet and dead and formatted that there's no power, there's no breakthrough. And I'm going to raise apostles, says the Lord. I'm going to raise prophets. I'm going to raise evangelists, pastors, and teachers after my own heart. People that are mine, that will love and care for my sheep and my people. And also begin to prophesy against the wolves and declare things against the wolves and the hyenas and those, those, those attackers and the vultures that chew on people, that abuse people, that suppress people. 
oppressors, criminals, evildoers, and I'm going to expose them. I'm going to have them locked up and thrown away. Watch me do it, says the Lord. I'm already bringing anti-corrupt movements in Africa as I've had my servant here Thomas Manton the fourth prophesy says the Lord I've had him prophesy over the nation of Kenya and over the other, other nations where uh, things are going to begin to happen and even in Nigeria the day will yet come when Christian leadership will get in, into positions of power there because I've ordained that and that's my heart that's my desire and yes there'll be great warfare over it all but hey uh, the end result will 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 uh, will bring about change that needs to happen. Other countries are going to be liberated. Many other countries, I can start to name nations. I have, I have a desire to see Cuba liberated. I have a desire to see South Africa sorted out from the mess, uh, messes of things that are going on there and Zimbabwe to come back to life again. And other countries, don't, don't, let, me, don't let me just start naming countries, but there's, I mean, there's 200 countries in the world. So if we start naming by names, start prophesying over them. We'll be here to we'll be here all night, which is okay, but uh, <laughs> I'll do that in another segment or another setting. But I, we're praying for the nations, and our job is to become leaders that are fitful, uh, fitfully useful for the master, anointed by his presence and power. <laughs> and God wants to God wants to use us. He wants to direct us. He wants to lead us. He wants us to take the kingdom by force he wants us to take the mountains and the kingdoms of this world societies back by force it's going to come through radical leadership radical leaders people who are not afraid people that are filled with fire people that begin to speak and do exploits and then afterwards they'll be able to ponder and think upon and say oh my god lord that was that was strong how did that happen and they'll just marvel in amazement at the miraculous that flowed. But God is ready to do this through you and he's ready to do it through me in greater ways even than what we've seen previously. So get ready, my friend, because the day is here now for you to be raised up and for you to rise up as one of his radical leaders for the advancement of the kingdom of God. I'm Thomas Manton IV. God bless you. And when you're sowing any partnership seed, which I pray you'll become a partner and do that, or sow something right now according to your own faith for what you believe in God and breakthrough, something generous as the Lord directs you, whatever he tells you to do it, I'll send you as my gift if you're in North America, my book, The Benefits of Excellence, and also this great DVD, a message I did called The Power to Create Wealth. Uh, when you're sowing any generous love gift to our world missions you could do that on thomasmanton.com and also on uh the other things that'll be on the screen there and you can do that and connect with us in jesus name become the radical leader that god wants you to be i love you i'm praying for you and i'll talk to you again on the next segment in jesus name the lord bless you